We are back here in the south side, and we are extremely happy to have G League President Sharif Abdur Rahim join us right here. You were just inducted into the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame. Congratulations. And how does that feel to be inducted here in your home state? Thank you. It's, it's awesome. It's probably not something you ever think about, right. you know, as a young kid. And to go in and, you know, as I walked around the, the, the Sports Hall of Fame and, and, and make it, and I saw guys I knew that were Georgia guys, you know, Kenny Skywalker, Walt Clyde Frazier, Jeff Malone, Dominique, all, you know, people I looked up to, you know, yep. being from Atlanta um, and Georgia is, is a great honor. You know, yep. not to mention, you know, the John Spost and Dale Murphys and, you know, just the many, many greats from our state, but um, a great honor. So yep. thank you. I just wanted to talk about your history here in Georgia because your name is Mr. Basketball a couple times. You won a state championship. You're named an all-star with the Atlanta Hawks. What does it feel like when you come here to the College Park and there's a G League team that's evolved? Well, and I'll tell you, a lot of folks don't know, I, I went to high school in Marietta, but, you know, I grew up right here on the south side, you know, all the way to high school. This is where I grew up. I put, you know, maybe three miles from here is, is where we live. So to see a G League team here is something really special to me. I tell people I didn't I didn't go to an NBA game until I played in the NBA game. Wow. Right? And, you know, as much as I love basketball, if we would have had a G League team on the south side of Atlanta growing up, you know, I would have, you know, found a way to, to be here as much as possible. Yeah, it's one of the best kept secrets, it feels like, yeah. sort of here in the Atlanta area. It's uh, obviously affordable, great seats, it's a cool little arena, and the team, you know, they play defense, they get at it, it's good basketball. And, and they're having a good a good season, I think the Hawks are doing an outstanding job, and it won't be, if, if it's still a secret, it won't be a, a secret for much longer, because I just, I think it's a great environment, a lot of fun. Um, the team is doing great, the Hawks overall do an outstanding job developing guys and, and, and having guys through the program. Um, everything the Skyhawks are doing here on the south side has been great engaging in the community. So um, it's, it's really growing. They're, they're doing a great job, and we're, we're really proud of them. Yeah, just to elaborate on, on the G League part of things, the Suns, Phoenix Suns announced recently they'll start a new G League team next season. So all 30 NBA teams have their own G League affiliate. 30 NBA teams have 30 affiliates. Tell us about that accomplishment. Yeah, well, that's that's been you know a, a long-standing you know goal. You right. Know, I think that you know a number of you know folks you know uh, Malcolm Turner and, and Tommy um, Smith before me, Dan Reed, a lot of people obviously um, late commissioner um, David Stern and and Adam and Mark Tatum have you know spent a lot of time on. So for our group to be able to you know get us. Over the threshold, we're really excited about it. Excited to have Phoenix and Matt Ishbia's group in, in the G League now. And I think, you know, just going to make our league even better having all of our teams here. Robert Silva draws that charge on that with Matos Buzelis flying in. Well, you've been president of the G League since 2018. It's evolved a lot, as we've just talked about. I'm, I'm kind of interested. I'm, I'm selfishly asking, how do you see this league evolving? even in the near future here? Well, I think it will continue. You know, we, we had an um, article that was out this week, and it featured the Hawks in it, talking about how young NBA players are continuing to grow. You know, it's not just the players that were overlooked in the draft that, you know, young players are, you know, young NBA players, and, you know, you see A.J. Griffin out here, right. are, are continuing to use our league to grow and develop. I think that's going to continue to expand. Lottery picks and young, you know, but, lots of being stars playing in our league. I think that's one. I think the connection, you know, globally with the game of basketball will continue to be a part of that and will continue to be used overall, just overall integration you'll continue to see us. You see our officials, our coaches, um, that'll right. continue to be a, a, a big part. Yeah, that's a good point. It's sort of like a, a feeding system for not just the players, but officials, coaches, and, and everybody, really. Broadcast people. Oh, <laughs> hey, hey, all right. Here we wow, go. We're going to be wow. calling the Atlanta Hawks game maybe <laughs> next week. We can keep it up. We, um, did, we did not pay Sharif for that. No, and I will and I will say, for you know, it is Kids Day, so maybe there's some kids watching. Sharif Abdul-Rahim, yes, the president of the G League, but also a bucket back in the day. Third, Many buckets. Third <laughs> pick in the 96 draft. Um, you know, in watching the G League and how it's grown, was it something like you maybe wished you did have, you know, back in, in the 90s? Well, I think, I think, you know, me personally, you know, I went to a young NBA team, so I had to play right away. But, you know, I can think of friends that had to leave and go play abroad. It would have been great for them right. to play, to be able to stay home and play. Um, you know, I can think of young NBA players, and, you know, like a guy like Jermaine O'Neal comes to mind that, 
you know, he, his first four or five years, they were so deep in Portland. Right. He would have, you know, probably, you know, been able to benefit from a G League or Tracy McGrady, players that went on to be really good players. So um, if, if we had that type of integration at that time, for sure. Um, but, you know, things take time to grow and evolve. Yep. And I think, you know, through the investment that NBA teams have made and the need and players getting younger and younger, we've, we've evolved and grown and, and, and hopefully we'll continue to grow. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, a Canadian show, a couple Canadians here. We definitely noticed you in Vancouver those five years you spent there. And then they came down to Memphis. Yes. Uh, which is uh, astonishing. As you said, David Sermon commonly says, I wish we could have made Vancouver work. Some things don't work, but it is great to see, as you said, this G League affiliation with 30 teams that you've been a part of here. But, but the, thing, the thing I say about Vancouver and Canada overall, if you look at all of the players, you know, and a lot of them come from the Ontario side of it, but if you look at the players that have come, you know, from uh, Canada over yeah. the last 20 years, I think a big part of that is, you know, Vancouver and obviously Toronto, the Raptors being um, in and basketball growing in Canada. So, you know, it did work. The team didn't stay there, but, <laughs> but ba basketball has definitely grown in Canada. And, you know, I think it did, it has worked. Can you talk to us about some of the moments you've had over the last six years as as uh, president of the G League? Or are there moments that stick out to you? Um, the, to me, honestly, the, the best moments um, are all the moments when I see people, um, you know, I see our, you know, this year we had um, Sheree and Intake officials that were, that advanced to the NBA. You know, every time I see one of our players that I've seen in our league for a number of years get an opportunity uh, to go to the, to the NBA. We had a, I, I bring it up again, we had a young broadcast person that had been, you know, with the Lakers for a number of years. Wow, that's a heck of a play. And got an opportunity with the Clippers this year. So when I see those things, those are the things that are really exciting um, for me. I see, you know, again, you see, you know, a place like College Park where that's close to me, seeing it continue to grow and the community getting closer and closer to it. Those type of um, things are the, are the things that are, are really special. Yeah. It'd be tough not to feel, yeah, proudful yeah. when someone gets the call up and, and goes to the next level in whatever profession that they're involved in basketball. It's really amazing. Yeah. So with the new Phoenix Suns team, there will officially be 32 teams next season. And, yes. and hearing Adam Silver talk about the future of the G League Ignite got me wanting to ask you because he did mention that he's not sure about the future with this team because after they were born, the NIL rule came in for a lot of college kids making money that way. You see it in, in other sports too, in football, women's basketball, they just go to college instead because this was looked at as an alternative. So what do you see as It, it, it has continued to be an alternative. I, you know, I, through its, you know, the four years, I've never thought of it as something we were competing with college to, you know, say, you know, don't go to college, come to the, to the G League. So it has, you know, continued to be an, an alternative or an option. Um, and, yep. you know, what Adam said is that we have to, you know, re you know reassess or assess it. We, you know, we've done that continuously every year. I think, you know, now we're at a point where NIL and, and kind of the new landscape have taken over. So we have to take a, a, you know, a serious look at it. And we will and just make sure that we continue to do the right things for the players to help them grow and, and, and develop and have a place for them in our league. But, but we'll do that, you know, and, it, and it's, it's needed. And we have been doing that, you know, year in and year out. I think we've just kind of reached an a, a inflection point, if you will, with where things are in the landscape with, with NIL and college. Yeah, you look at this Ignite team, obviously looks like they are producing a great culture. And as you said, you got the 30 teams coming along with this Ignite team, plus the Capitanes in Mexico City. Yeah. Great places to watch basketball, to be a part of the culture in 32 teams in 32 different cities, which is remarkable since, you know, since you were around, how they've evolved and since how they've become this. Well, I mean, again, I think, you know, Ignitus, Ignitus, Rob, up? Ignitus is unique. Um, the Capitanes is just a great, great story that, you know, we probably don't talk about enough what's going on in, in Mexico City and what they've done and what they're building in Latin America, you know, overall, that, the attention that they're getting. They've done a great job, you know, fans engaging with them. They've done a great job, you know, on the business side, what they put out as far as the basketball product. They, they've done an outstanding job. So, that's, that's kind of one of the hidden secrets about our league that we yeah. probably don't um, talk about again enough. Makes me want to get down there and watch yeah. the basketball, that's for sure. I'd love to go to Mexico City. <laughs> and, 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 I mean, it's a really fun environment. Like, yeah. it, it's, it's a really fun environment. There's Gabe York hitting his shots as the Ignite trail by six now, but the Skyhawks 
getting hot. The shot's getting hot. Miles Norris with a couple beautiful plays here to get them up. I think the six. Sky likes, the Skyhawks like having Sharif Abdul-Rahim here on the call with us because uh, they've really turned it up here in the second quarter since he joined us on well, the they, call. They, they pick up the intensity and the physicality and, and, and are really getting after it. And they, they had a, I mean, and, and, you know, not all of our teams can, you know, in the first part of our season put together a, good, a strong first part. They've been able to be consistent and, you know, be a really good team, a strong team in the second part of our season, too. So, um, you know, it's just credit to, to the team and, and coach and everyone. Absolutely. Yeah. Rob Baker came over, gave Sharif a high, Rob, high Rob, shake. Rob was an intern in our league office. So, <laughs> wow. shout out Rob Baker. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank to you Sharif Abdul-Rahim joining Thank us. We'll be right back from yep. the Skyhawks game. <laughs> 